So we continue to explore the I am sayings of Jesus. We hear today part of that familiar, yet rather strange story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead. A story in which we see not only the very human reactions of a family losing a well-loved member, but also a human side of Jesus when he is recorded as weeping at the tomb. And it's a story that seems to confound the laws of nature. When a person declared dead and then interred in a tomb for four days is brought back to life by the words of Jesus. But like so much that occurs not only in scripture, but often in the world throughout history, this event helps illustrate without much fanfare that there is so much we as humans do not comprehend, as well as help us through the words and actions of Jesus to discover more of just who he is and what he does for us all, even when we think we are dead and beyond any kind of help or life. Now, by the time we began our reading today, Jesus knew his friend Lazarus was dead. And despite the threats to his own life, he made that journey toward Jerusalem to see the family. And although his disciples didn't quite understand yet, he would ensure that Lazarus was restored to life. So in the portion of the story we heard earlier, we find Jesus arriving in Bethany and Lazarus already four days in the tomb with a customary weeping and wailing ongoing. Necessary, it was believed in the society of the time, but when, that when a person had just died, that noise had to go on to stop and upset the devil, interfering as the deceased soul left the body. And then Martha, ever practical sister, on hearing of Jesus' approach, she goes out to meet him and greets him in a very human way. I'm a way I'm sure many of us can relate to. When something we hope for or we hope is, can help us is not around when we had expected them to be. Those words, where were you? Why didn't you come sooner? We may have heard them, we may have used them. Yet despite this reaction, Martha's faith in what Jesus can achieve is still strong enough because she also goes on to say, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And then when Jesus gave her that hope and that promise that Lazarus would indeed rise again, Martha showed her shared belief of the nation that those who died would often behold God. And they, that was because a majority believed that what occurred at the moment of death was that the two worlds of time and eternity met and kissed so people could see the face of God. So her reaction, I know, that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day was very much a, a belief of the society of the time. But then we get Jesus' response in verse 25, bringing something new to that belief. It's a new vividness and meaning to those words, resurrection and life. For Jesus tells her and anyone who listened including us now as we hear the words of God from Scripture, when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. It's another of Jesus' I am saying, although this one can maybe difficult to fully comprehend and believe in. After all, there are many more learned folks than me that have pondered over these words and what exactly Jesus 
meant by them. <coughs> Excuse me. Even commentators such as William Barclay openly state not even a lifetime's thinking can reveal the full meaning of these words. I am the resurrection and the life. And then Jesus continues saying, anyone who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, we may not fully understand, but we can give, like Martha, an affirmative answer to his question, surely. Certainly, as people who believe, we can. But do we have enough trust and faith in Jesus to believe all he does tell us? Well, we can give it our best shot. Whereas we try to understand what we hear, especially from the Gospels and Jesus himself. Now, much as we were looking at earlier, before the young folk went into the hall, we can, with the best of our knowledge, try to understand, in this case, to try and resurrect that poor plant. And it's a bit like that. To the best of our knowledge, we can try and explore the lights of John's gospel and the words of Jesus in his I am saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Now we can see clearly from what we do know and experience in our own lives and society, let alone that specific event in which this I am saying, faith alone does not prevent physical death. Even Jesus himself knew his physical life on earth was coming to an end. But as mere humans, we can only really begin to understand such words and events in physical terms. For our vocabulary and our knowledge does not and will never match that of Jesus. We can but do the best with what we have in front of us. So let us try. Jesus was thinking of the death of sin. Even if a person has committed such a horrendous sin, they feel they can, can never have anything approaching a normal life again, Jesus can still reach out to them through his own life and witness. You think of his final words on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And there are many stories told of hardened criminals, for example, hearing or reading these words and then repenting of their sins. And they are brought to a new life with Christ, even if they are at the end of a physical life. Now, I have do a lot of funerals. And I may have told some of you this story before. I've done a lot, especially of late. But I was once told in a church that I should not say that everyone goes to heaven. And that was following a funeral I had just done where the person was seen wildly as not having what society would call a respectable life. As it happened in that case, I knew that person had repented and had reformed towards the end of their life on earth. So I said then, and I will always say, I'm always going to say people have that chance to go to heaven. But it's not up to me or anyone else to judge whether they stay. Because we're not the ones who know the final thoughts or words of anyone, regardless of whatever kind of life they had lived. Only God knows that. But through our understanding more of just who Jesus is, that can surely help us begin to understand that anyone 
can be brought from through the death of sin to eternal life. A person can, even if they're not a serial criminal, become dead to life because they are dead to the needs of others. They are so insensitive to others' feelings, they become involved with petty hostilities. They become dead to honour. And I'm sure we could all name someone that we met at some point in our lives that's been a bit like that. A person who had became so hopeless and inert to life that they become spiritually dead. Yet, through the love and witness of Jesus, if they are touched by him, they can be resurrected. They can be brought back to life because of what he tells us. I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus would, of course, also be thinking of life to come. We think, and often many say, our current lives is the land of the living. But when we face death, Jesus knows and he's trying to help us understand that what we're actually leaving is the land of the dying. And we enter as people of faith that real land of the living as we pass on to eternal life because of him. And that occurs because we believe in Jesus. If we believe absolutely in all he says and does, is true. And when we have perfect trust in the one who tells us, as he did Martha, and all around the tomb of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. We have that hope. Because in our belief and trust, we enter that new relationship with God because we believe Jesus tells us of the absolute love that God has for each and every one of us. And because of that, we can believe with all certainty that he is indeed the redeeming God. And then the fear of physical death goes. Yes, we can fear the pain and the suffering at the end of death. And many of us have probably sat with those we have lost and loved, who have suffered more than we thought anyone could. But the, because of their death means we actually go to a life with that greatest love of all that's beyond anything the world could ever comprehend or try to understand. And if we hold on to that belief, we enter that new relationship with life. As we accept Jesus' way of living, when we commit ourselves to his commandments, as we realize that with Jesus always alongside us in all we say and do, our lives are renewed. And we find a new and different strength to continue because we know life will not end, but instead become more complete as we journey through this life on to the next, which is with him. By believing in what Jesus says, we are resurrected into a new life. Free of the fear and constraints that those who do not believe have. That's because they're controlled by sin. Not by the promise of God's rep repentance and love. Now we're never told our faith and our belief will give us an easy life here on earth. But through our faith and our trust, even when we struggle to understand in the one who tells us, I am the resurrection and life, we can join with Martha 
when she answers Jesus' query, do you believe this? We can join in those words. Yes, Lord, I believe. (coughs) We can never fully comprehend in this life what Jesus does mean when he tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. But through our faith and trust in all he does say, we know at the very least we will have eternal life because of him. We can take comfort in all he does and says as he tries to describe who he is through all the I am sayings. As today we heard him reminding us once again, I am the resurrection and the life. And all who believe in me will have life though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Human understanding, vocabulary, science and research from even the most learned brains will often struggle with the concept of Jesus' words and witness. But they can never pull apart a true trust and faith in the love and care of Jesus. For the one who is the resurrection and the life will never be contained within any structure of human making. And for that, we can be truly grateful. Amen.